Well, good morning. Good morning on this third day of Christmas. Yes, it is the third day, but most of us are so glad that it's over. You've made the deadline, and boy, do we love deadlines, don't we? I trust you're still getting through the holidays and got what you needed from Secret Santa. A huge thank you to the Unity team and a wonderful volunteer crew to help provide such fabulous music, story, and gatherings over the holidays and over Zoom. We really appreciated that and it was really wonderful. We have found the ability to make many connections and conversations more possible now than ever before. And it's really remarkable that actually Mrs. Claus is back here in the sanctuary with us today. Thank you, Mrs. Claus, for all that wonderful gift you gave us on Christmas Eve. As well, I got some new jammies that are underneath this suit right now, feeling nice and cozy. As with most of you, I'm sure, there was a very different expectation for Christmas and Christmas gathering this year. It was just my wife, Diane, Wonder Woman, and myself, no running around all over the territories, no pressure of a normal Christmas visitation train event. We got to sleep in, take our time, make some gluten-free waffles with our neighbor's blueberry jam. It was so sweet. As a young boy, Christmas was the emotional warm bond with my family. How much do I miss that emotional feeling of it? We would get all dressed up late at night and go to the midnight mass Christmas Eve. It was a huge event, of course, a very big spectacular event. And all we could think about was what was going to happen in the morning? What was Santa going to bring? We couldn't even keep still. And then we'd get back, of course, we'd wake up in the morning at 6 o'clock or 6.30 and we'd have to get all the adults out of bed. And that was always a challenge because, of course, you know, there was some party in the night before, they didn't get much sleep. So they come staggering out into the front room with their glasses all akimbo and their hairs all out like this. And we would open up the loudest presents we got from our grandparents first, of course, right? Pure sugar chaos ensued. It was wonderful. We told kid jokes like, what do you get when you cross a snowman and a vampire? Frostbite, right? <clears throat> it felt like frostbite when I told our daughter that we would not be having Christmas in person this year. What a shock it was for her and likely for you in sharing the story of no, no gatherings this year in 2020. But next year, there will be a sharing of the old traditions around the Christmas tree, and I'm sure there will be new stories to be shared. In this time, there is so much to share. So much confusion, so much brokenness, and yet so much hope. And in that hope, in that confusion, I do a lot of artwork. And I've engaged, as some of you know, in creative arts for years. And that expression has opened my heart to see how vast we are, each of us, in the world. I'd like to show you a painting I've done recently, a sharing, that was born out of emotional frustrations of 2020. Dave's going to put it up here. This painting is four panels. It's four feet wide and eight feet tall. And in this work, it shows the hopes of families from many places, overcoming histories of previous civilizations down below in the lower panel, looking to live in peace in a world that holds the promise of love, protection, and understanding of all hearts, not just for a few. This world can be and promises to be a loving and inviting place protected by angels. How do you and I help support this idea? It used to be, not long ago, that a population, a country, believed in basic rituals, celebrations, songs, to establish a community of people's agreement to work together, to live together, to sing together, to support each other. We used to have a collective agreement also that we would get our Christmas wishes from Macy's delivered by Santa himself. Why do I say it used to be? Well, there are times in our lives filled with emotional events that change our course of our personal history and the traditions that we 
love and have counted on. This year with all this crazy events happening is one of them. The big question amongst all the frustration that's come up for me this year is, what is real? What is really real? What, why am I so frustrated? What do I need to let go of? Reality, according to the dictionary, reality is whatever is emotionally important to you. It's very personal. So reality has, every person has their own reality about the way things should be. And to me, Christmas and the flavors of peace are near and dear to my heart. But also what we buy, who we spend time with, what part of the $10 billion we contributed to this year's national election is all driven by emotion. I have to share with you that I have been frustrated the last few months especially, and I sought help from other ministers about what was my perceived, what were my perceived issues. In self-reflection in self and prayer, it comes down to wanting control of my environment and feeling helpless to relieve the separation and suffering that poses a huge threat to our survival of not only our families, but also our communities. And wanting people also to have a sense of decency and respect for each other. I feel like we've lost a little bit of that this year, don't you? <clears throat> Reverend Kristen had shared a story a few weeks ago that I found very helpful. From our vantage point, we really do not know what is good or bad in the long run for ourselves or for our community. We all hang on to the perception of the way it should be. Hey, it's worked for the last 20 years. Why all the mix-up and change-up that's happening all at once? Can't we change the temperature just a little bit so I can feel like I control some of it? But there are many great possibilities that have come out of these frustrations that I will share later. Well, contrary, well, uh, constant controversy and sensationalism is going on. We are called to reflect on whether our own emotional energy is contributing to more negative forces or to the positive energy force that we, that we want, that I believe that we really want. We have to ask ourselves that question. I find that I hold pain and worry in the back of the left side of my neck, in my shoulder, when there is pain, there is worry or upset. The only remedy for my worry is to go into deep meditation. When I come out, all the pain is gone. All the worry is gone. Where did it go? I don't know. I don't really care. But I feel great. And through inner practices, we can release our own pain. The daily word for today is release. I release and move forward. I release the judgment, fear, and poor me moments. It's easy to say, harder to do. But I would, like to, I would like you to help me with some affirmations today. We're going to release and affirm during the course of this talk, okay? First of all, I release those thoughts that no longer serve me. Because I affirm there is only one presence and one power in my life the all-loving goodness of God. Faith and hope are positive forces that raise the energy to a higher power. And I believe it is our job to share that hopeful energy no matter what the circumstances are around us. For not only, not only our own sanity, but for the sanity of those around us. As Christopher Robin said to Winnie the Pooh, Promise me you'll always remember that you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. And that goes for every one of you and me. Some of the major choices we make on a moment-to-moment -moment basis is how we perceive and react to the world around us. All variants of emotions are created within us, yet we always have the choice point to change our reaction. Now, the media knows how to help us realize our deepest fears. 
to get our attention since way before even radio was invented. Does anybody remember the story of the War of the Worlds? It was written in 1897, but Orson Welles made it a radio show, The Candle Life, in 1938. It was a very dramatic radio show, and many Americans were convinced and put into a panic that there were aliens actually out to get us. The imaginary threats have been created over and over ever since bigger, more personal, and more powerful ways. Yet I know many who think the aliens never left. The original fake news story. We tend to like stories of potential catastrophe. We are currently living in the golden age. This is the most prosperous, healthiest, and abundant time in the history of humankind, depending on your point of view. It wasn't very long ago, say 100 to 120 years ago, that there, were, there was no clean running water in our homes. There was no indoor air conditioning, no heating. The streets were not paved. They were a mess with horse manure everywhere. It was a very different environment. Most people in the Northern Hemisphere were living on a dollar a day. There was no radio, no TV, no internet. But currently we are much wealthier. And many own their own homes with running water and electricity in it. I'm really thrilled and happy that we have that. Yet only a small percentage of Americans think we are better off than some far away yesterday. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't miss my mother's need to cook and fry up liver every Friday night. I'm not going back there. I'm not doing it. I know it's tough right now, but I like it better now. Our human brain is trained to look for catastrophe constantly. We are 10 times more attracted to danger, potential threat, and negativity than positive affirmations and positive information. Our emotions are obviously disturbed and ignited by negativity and disaster. Disaster potential on the horizon. Most of it never materializes. We have trained our minds for many generations to do this. And we continue to watch movies and shows and have internet games to keep that part of ourselves well fed. Abraham Lincoln stated over 150 years ago, we live in the midst of alarms. Clouds cover our future. We expect some new disaster with every newspaper we read. So this is not a new concept for us. But it's time for release and affirmation. I release those thoughts that hold me down or disturb my peace. Because I affirm that there is only one presence and one power active in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. This past year has been a time of multiple pandemics. 2020 started out innocently enough with mean-spirited, divisive rhetoric from leaders and the rock-throwing from behind social media platforms and the conspiracy theory games on the internet were growing rapidly. Suddenly, the fourth pandemic in 20 years hits our country and, of course, many, many, many other countries. It's as if God said, okay, you all cannot play nice. You go to your rooms right now for a while. You go to your rooms, okay? I've had it with you guys. That's what it felt like. still feels that way. As the summer wore on, people were buying into more grander Internet stories of fake news and the apocalypse as many were dying around the world from COVID. For the COVID, uh, sorry, for the COVID pandemic, the confusing messages from leadership were, well, confusing. We can't play football or soccer in Northern California because the hospitals are too full. So let's go down to Arizona to play because the hospitals are too full. 
a little inconsistency is happening there. But the story making by internet conspirators to blow the political and infectious issues into crazy disconnected stories of catastrophe is happening on a grand scale. Now recall old tabloid magazines like the Enquirer would splash headlines across the front. Aliens stole my baby. Today's internet tabloids cry foul on our constitutional rights. Hollywood is to blame. Some governors are criminals. And our new savior must save thousands of kids from being taken by aliens. What is that about? But you know what? Aliens are really popular this year for some reason. I still haven't figured that out. I have family members that truly believe, without debate or question, that the Queen of England has been replaced by aliens during this COVID time. That COVID-19 is a fake alternative world controlled by only a few. Any vaccinations will be death. And JFK, JFK himself, is still alive and well and likely pouring tea for the Queen right now, the alien Queen, right now as we speak. I am sure of it. And many other apocalyptic stories that are emotionally rewarded by finding and solving more clues deeper into the rabbit hole of the game. There's no ultimate plot or goal to the game, just to cause separation and havoc in the minds of those who play. The emotional connection to these made-up conspiracy stories has created an emotional block to what was most important, the family connections, the Christmas tree that we see right here, the, the national election process, or a vaccination uh, protection for each other. The belief in vaccinations from horrible diseases in this country has fallen from 90% to about 50% because of the spread of misinformation and made-up stories. The pandemic mis misinformation has been as devastating to the mental and emotional health of families as the COVID-19 pandemic itself. I, I told you I was frustrated, and these are one of the things I'm frustrated about. But it's time for release and affirmation. I release these thoughts that make no sense and that are divisive. I am moving forward into positive grace because I affirm that there is only one presence and one power in my life, God the good, the all-loving goodness of God. We have to stop and we have to affirm what our grounding is. Each person is in their own movie with their own motivations, their own beliefs, and that's fine. Yet I still do not like stories of the, the zombie apocalypse. I don't like, like zombies. My belief system is framed with the hope of emotional warmth and caring, a hope that there is and will be a peaceful tradition of sharing goodwill, like an ending to a Charlie Brown Christmas story. There is so much hope and so much blessing before us, but it's up to us to create it. Are we done and tired with the 2020 way of doing things? Are we ready to move into a new blessing, a new consciousness? Are we ready? In the next segment, I will help to discover our own inner power to live a frequency of love. Meanwhile, our friend Mark Stanton Welch is going to help us with a song. And we'll be right back. Well, I'm tired of this, tired of that, and all that lies between. I'm thinking it's the stay in place. I'm tired of my routine. I'm looking at the surface of how I do my day. It seems that something deeper is pushing that away. There is a bigger picture of why this came around. It's not so much the outside, it's the inside screaming loud. The way I've done my life has been an uncommitted dream. With starts and stops and wishes that someone would notice me. Sweet cosmic 
intervention a wash of frequency in love return me to my true intention to live this frequency of love 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 it turns out what i'm tired of is the choices i have made to rarely seize the moment to just hesitate away retreat into creation as my safe and magic land and shudder out the offerings refuse the reaching hands yeah, I'm tired so here in isolation it's me that's in review I'm facing what I'm tired of and learning I can choose to finally let the truth of me be what that which I ignite and step into the flowing land of universal light yes inspire Sweet cosmic intervention, a wash of frequency in love. Return me to my true intention to live the frequency of love. Yes, love. Love, love. It's time to let go of the do it all myself devotion. It's time to let go of the judgments, fear, and poor me moments. It's time to lay down the waiting for someone to rescue me. Time to lay down all my finding faults with being seen. It's time to release all of my stories used to separate. It's time to release all thoughts that I have made mistakes in. It's time to drop the veil of special I keep fabricating. It's time to drop the reasons that I spin for not connecting. I'm so tired of it all. Stay in place, we'll stay until we remember who we are and choose to live that frequency no matter where we are. Alone is forced a taking stock of how we've lived our life and set us now in motion to reclaim the life divine. Sweet cosmic intervention, a wash of frequency in love. Return me to my true intention to live this frequency of love. Yes, love. Love, love, the 
this frequency of love. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm tired of this, I'm tired of that, and all that lies between. I'm so tired. Thank you, Mark, for that thoughtful song. How do I get back to that frequency of love? How do I enjoy that frequency of love that you sing about? What do I have to let go of first, right? Judgment, fears, my stories of separation. To clear a way for an emotional heart. To know deeply that heaven's at hand and there is a new life awaiting. I feel a release and an affirmation coming on. I release thoughts that no longer serve me because I affirm Together, there is only one presence and one power active in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. No matter our loss of family and friends to COVID pandemic or internet mind games or the zombie apocalypse, I go to headquarters as Charles Fillmore did and hold my meditations with God and seek the still small voice behind all the noise to be someone that I'm not. That still small voice to guide me, to comfort me, to know that my dedication to my own heart and my reliance on God's grace will see me and the ones I love through it all. Science of Mind author Ernest Holmes quotes, I have no doubt, but that if we were to completely surrender ourselves to this divine presence and let it guide us, everything would be all right in our lives. When we come to understand ourselves as one with a divine power seeking to express itself through all of us, all life, then we come to better understand our responsibility for spreading good. Through it all, 2020 has brought me gifts of insight, new perspectives, and chances to grow in new ways. Here are some positive thoughts and outcomes due to the COVID pandemic, right? Many of our relationships are stronger. There's some cousins I've talked to recently I haven't seen for 30 years. It's awesome. More time spent with kids. Now, some of you may have think, think otherwise, but in our neighborhood, we have some young families around, and the fathers are out playing with their kids and connecting in a way that I never connected with my father. It's very inspiring to have the time and the energy to be with their kids. <clears throat> a return to faith and science. More unity, less polarity. Appreciation of the outdoors now more than ever. Online learning. Virtual workplace by all. Less traffic stronger family care, new appreciation for teachers and stay-at-home parents, much more energy for social and civic involvement. In this time in the midwinter, it is important to acknowledge, reflect, and celebrate being alive and being part of the golden age that we are moving into rapidly. As a matter of fact, next Thursday night, we'll again celebrate the turning of the calendar a marking of another spin around the sun together, an opportunity for the opening of new possibilities. Yes, there are new possibilities that come in. Meanwhile, I encourage you to do a few things. Pray and practice releasing and affirmative affirmations. Meditations, meditations in the heart space, showing your heart, glowing light into the world. I encourage each one of us to take 10 minutes and tune into God radio in our heart space instead of the alternatives. I encourage you to practice forgiveness for yourself and for others. I encourage you to turn down invitations to pick others apart or throw rocks. It's just bad juju. No need for that. 
Do not, I repeat, do not, do not look at your phone for at least an hour after you wake up in the morning. I double dog dare you. Do yoga, meditation, take a walk. Establish who you are first, not to the addiction of what others want you to be. Let go of what does not serve you to be as a brilliant, loving human being that you are. Establish that first when you wake up in the morning. And call on God, the Great Spirit, the magnifier of all beings to help your heart be willing to see the world in new, loving ways. Only through our own individual heart work can the world change for us all. I will continue to my dying day to have the news people say, look, see, Bob Hardy has a Christmas tree, like this one. And the light shine as God, as the God that light shines within and through all of us. There is God's hope and love for all of us, always. I have a Christmas prayer that I would like to share. <clears throat> Let us pray that strength and courage abundant be given to all who work for a world of reason and understanding, that the good that lies in each of our hearts may day by day be magnified, That we will come to see more clearly, not that which divides us, but that which unites us. That each hour may bring a closer to final victory, not of nation over nation, but of ourselves over our own transgressions. That the true spirit of this Christmas season, its joy, its beauty, its hope, and above all, its abiding faith, may live among us every day. That the blessings of peace be ours, the peace to build and grow, to live in harmony and sympathy with others, and to plan for the future with confidence. It takes each of us. Live fully now, serve fully now, fuel the positive, have a brilliant new year. And I'd like to end us with this affirmation together. I affirm my oneness with my Creator and my awareness of the divine within me. I will always look to Source as my one guiding light. And so it is. Blessings to you all. Happy New Year.